Okay, let's head to uh, the Adelaide Oval now, where Port Adelaide has just finished its training session. Seven weeks they led the competition, and uh, after losing to Adelaide, they now sit in second place, and they're in the tooth and nail fight for home finals come qualifying final weekend. Ken Hinckley, the coach of the power, is with us. Ken, welcome again to AFL 360. Thanks, Jared. Robbo? If we took a sample of maybe six weeks rather than one week, and say since the bye... Do you think the form hasn't quite been what it was at the, in that first phase of the season? Uh, look, I'm not too sure. I think we've been pretty solid. Um, you know, we've lost two games in the last three, but we, you know, we got beat by Sydney in a really good game up in Sydney. I suppose it was a performance that was uh, was pretty satisfactory as far as uh, the way we played. Unfortunately, the weekend was a little disappointing. I think our defensive numbers, Jerry, and that's what I talk about the most, um, have, have stood up pretty strongly again until the weekend, and that's credit to Adelaide. I reckon this is the grind of the season, this phase. And this is a young team which we've spoken about with a great merit along the way. Is, is there any sign to your eye that it's just getting a little bit harder as we hit the depths of winter? No, not really. I, you know, I'm not going to sit there and say that we're, we're expecting that to come or not expecting it to come. I think we've, uh, you know, we're, we're in pretty good shape, we, albeit we've got a couple of injuries and uh, you know, that's not helping us a little bit. But I think if you go on tonight's training performance, that's, that's the most immediate thing that I can go on. The boys trained really well tonight, really sharp. You know, they responded, I think, to the weekend's game and it's only been a few days. So I'm quite excited by the way they've trained to, to think that they'll come out and play pretty good footy again on the weekend. Just before I let Robo loose on you, just the injury toll at Jackson Trengove. What's the latest there? Uh, look, unfortunately, Jackson's uh, had surgery this afternoon. He's uh, gone into hospital. We, we went and had him checked out today, and the decision was to have surgery to hopefully get him back within four to six weeks. It's a typical ankle injury that they get in those positions. They needed to do some corrective surgery to give him the best chance to heal the quickest. And uh, so we're looking like about a four to six week uh, break for Jacko. Is there any element of gamble in that, Ken, or was this the best way to get him back for the finals campaign? Yeah, and that, was, that was the safest way for us to get him back in the, uh, in the shortest time. You know, the other option was to put him in a plaster cast for six weeks and then slowly bring him back from there. The surgery helps him recover much quicker and gives him a chance to get uh, active quite quickly. Within a couple of weeks, he should be active again. OK, and how did Ella Party Carlisle come through? Yeah, Bobby's is not so uh, so bad from from our point of view. It's a it's a slight hamstring that's going to keep him out for for probably two weeks. There's a chance that he may miss three, but at this stage we're confident that he'll be back for the Melbourne game. So well, that's a, that was the good news of the day, I suppose. Kenny, the positive out of losing games of football is that you can get into this group again and say, right, it's round 15. This is what we have to do to win games. If we don't do this, we're going to lose games. You leave you leave uh, Sydney. I know, it was great to listen to you that night. You were talking about, we don't accept that. Adelaide on the weekend, you weren't good enough. But does this give you an opportunity to sit down with the boys and say, righto, we're in unfamiliar territory, this is what we've got to do? Yeah, I reckon you're right. I think it uh, makes us sit back and say, OK, we're, we've had a really strong start to the season. For, for probably the first two-thirds two -thirds of the season, we've been strong. But unfortunately, now our form in the last game was one that we're not satisfied with. You know, the Sydney game, we're not satisfied with losing. So we have to continually get better. If we don't get better now, the season will disappear. And that's what will happen to us. The, the season at the back end gets harder to play and, gets, and, and the competition gets better, I think. And, you know, the sides who stand up the strongest are the ones who make it through in the best shape. Well, you've just spoken about the hurdles of the two, two injuries at the back half. What about mentally? On the weekend, it looked like for the first time for quite some time that uh, you weren't up for the fight. They were, they were hungrier. They wanted it. Example was Matty Wright's smother at the end, you know, turned an attacking move into a, into a goal for them. Those little things that you talk about every time you come on this show, they had them. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Look, I, I probably sensed a little bit at half time, to be, to be honest. I thought that Adelaide were, were playing quite strongly, albeit that we'd uh, you know, had a number of scoring shots in the first half. But I felt as if they had a little bit of confidence about they'd stayed in the game and they were going as well as they, they were hoping to go, I think, at that stage and hadn't done everything they wanted right. And then they really wanted the game. They, uh, you know, they, that's credit to them and Sando and the boys. I'm sure they'd be sitting back really pleased with their performance. We're, we're not as, obviously not as happy that we weren't able to match their intensity at the ball and you know, the contested ball stuff. They really showed us up 
in that area. And you're right, the little things at the end of the day made a big difference and uh, they got the result that they needed uh, and we, we didn't get the result that we desperately needed. So the, both sides were, were in need of a really strong win and, uh, you know, unfor unfortunately, we didn't get it and Adelaide did. We have, we have Rizzi and uh, Bomber here on Monday night. I'm sure you, you, you tune in sometimes. We asked them, did they make mistakes while they were coaching? What, what, at the stage of a game, did something happen which they didn't react to? Did something happen in the second half and in your review of the coaches, did you think that you and your group didn't react quick enough? Yeah, no doubt. I think we got it wrong at half time, Robbo. That's the honest answer. I think we uh, we made some adjustments to our team at half time. They made some adjustments to what they were doing. Unfortunately for us, uh, I think we got ours wrong. They got theirs right. Uh, that's that's our responsibility as coaches. We sh we have to stand up on game day as much as the um, the players do, and and we certainly didn't help the players with uh, the positionings that we went with after half time. It's something we needed to look at. Which ones can you tell us? Which ones stood out, Kenny, or not? Oh, and I think it's just the way we were playing the game. And as I said, in the first half, we were you know, quite dominant in the second quarter with, uh, I think we kicked two goals, seven to three goals, one. So we had the game being played the way we wanted. And for some reason, as a coach, I chose to try and do something a bit different. And unfortunately, uh, they did something different at the same time. And, and they got they gotten better of us. And they, they got the result that they wanted in the third quarter, which then made it difficult for us to uh, come back in the last quarter. What did you do differently and why did you do it? I'm not going to tell you that, Robbo. Sorry, <laughs> we did uh, we did a couple of things. Di we did a couple of things differently that I wouldn't like to do again. We always get to that point. I like these <laughs> interviews. <laughs> um, we were watching training tonight, Ken. You had an earpiece in. What what uh, what are you doing out at training um, that gives you communication during a session? I think it's uh, most, the main thing is Jared, communication between coaches because on the on the ground it's obviously a large ground that we uh, train on and uh, you know we're trying to communicate from one end of the ground to the other uh, to each coach and making sure we're getting the, the right things that we want out of each drill. That's the number one thing we're doing. Plus we're you know we're reviewing our training back at the end of training, so we need to know what's what it's looking like from from a uh, visual point of view from up in the stands. So there's a few things that we're looking for there, and they're just an easier way for us to communicate as coaches. And then there's the post showdown effect, which has been spoken about over many years. You've had three. The first one you backed up and won um, late last year. You lost on the back of a showdown, but that was against Geelong. So there was I'm not sure whether you take anything out of that. You did get run over by North Melbourne uh, at the start of this year. Do you have any theory yet on whether the post showdown offers a risk either physically or mentally? Um, no, it's not one I've even thought of, Jared. to be honest. I, uh, I think each game you play is pretty tough. I mean, we played the, off the back of the Sydney game. Is, is there a bigger, is there a tougher, is there a harder game of football we could have come off? I don't think that's an excuse in any way. I think it's just a, a factor of the a competition. We've got to turn up and play a game well each week, and that, whether that's off the back of a showdown, off the back of a big game, that's what we expect of each other, and that's what we have to be able to do. It's not one that I want to probably entertain spending too much time thinking about, is there, a, is there any lag from a, from a showdown? I don't think there should be. I think it should be, uh, it'll be in the mind, if anything, and that's what we should be able to control. Ken, just off uh, your boys for a second, myself and Jerry were having a debate about Adam Goods, who's playing his 340th game and overtaking uh, Andrew McLeod. And I asked him who was the better player. Can I ask you? And you can't, don't say I don't know. You've got to <laughs> pick one. Um, you've got to split one. Um, Goodsy's won two Brownlows. I think McLeod's won two Norm Smiths. Um, I think we all talk about grand finals, win, we want to win grand... I think I'll take McLeod because he done it when the, uh, when the biggest game, when you want to win a grand final. So I suppose uh, if I'm going to go one and you're asking me to split, I'll go with McLeod. Nuts. Well done. I chose McLeod as well and Jared went for the glory of the Brownlow medal. <laughs> Kenny, uh, great to have you with us again on AFL 360. Really appreciate it. Thanks, boys. Terrific. See ya. OK, Jackson Trengove surgery. Um, so it, go? it felt like things weren't as bad as they might have been on Monday, but as the weeks developed, clearly is. So four to six weeks, and this, you know, that they've done that to make sure that he gets back for the last couple of games of the home and away and into a final series. Four to six. What are we? Round 15. 16. 16. With round 18 goes two weeks. And big blokes take a lot longer to get mm. their... Uh, and it's a leg, in leg injury. Like, his fitness will be swimming. He'll have to keep weight off it. So he's going to lose a tremendous amount of match fitness. It's so important to them. It's so, not just on the field either. He's the, that was the most surprising he's a general. thing. He's a general. Yeah, he's when a I leader. saw them um, in the inner sanctum, he's such an influential figure with him. I, didn't, I had no idea about that. Mm. So he will be missed.
And he's got to play in just about the best key forward mm. through the final series. He has got a really big period of his life coming up. 